And then we go to the rumor mill of what we heard so far this week. And the first thing we're going to talk about and get a little bit of everybody's reaction is Jacksonville. So this is a classic uh, Florida karting. You can hear the groans already. Classic Florida karting track. Um, they have been posting a little bit on social media about it. You can see on the layout here, super long straightaway. Uh, I believe long, at least as long, if not a little bit longer, than Newcastle Motorsports Park front stretch. It's over a thousand foot long on the front straightaway. And you can see a lot of the corners are very sweeping. The reason why the groans are in the room is whenever we take some of the faster, higher horsepower series there, with how good the carts handle nowadays, even when you go with a fast cart there, even in shifters, it's a pretty easy flowing track to get into. The only hard braking points you get are at the end of the long straightaway and then a little bit up if you're going the normal direction, which is counterclockwise. Um, that concrete section, right? that right-hander 90 past the concrete section is like the only other real passing zone you get, maybe into that left 180. But that 180 is so banked, and so many of those corners are banked, it makes it really, really easy. And I know, I know if we go there for any Winter Series events, Brandon, Ryan, Paulie, you guys are excited for qualifying with a full-speed racetrack <laughs> right that, right? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. That track is so rough and really dangerous unless they make some super you know updates on the on the track i i'm not really looking forward to it i've had i've seen so many people crash there and hurt themselves really bad it's yeah it's not i'm not really looking forward to that i i wanted rock and those the series to not be on parking lots but jacksonville is one of those where i'm like oh well Maybe the parking lot's not so bad after all. <laughs> Brandon, what do you think? You I mean, raced Jacksonville, probably the most recent out of everybody in this group. Yeah, I did uh, a few of the um, uh, Winter Series races there when WK had a Winter Series. And in X30, like you said, it's a very easy track. I mean, I think you lift in maybe two or three corners out of all of them. And it takes the uh, the draft aspect to a new level, even more than what we see at Newcastle. So, I mean, qualifying would definitely be very interesting. I mean, I think you can go from being like first in pace to probably fifteenth if you're if you're not in the right position for qualifying. But um, with all that said, though, I believe the racing would probably be pretty pretty good there because I don't think anyone would be able to pull away. But it'd be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, so that's where it gets really interesting, right? There's more news that have been coming out of it. So we had our show last week on August 23rd. Then we go to August 24th, right? And we take a look at what we've just got on the screen now. So that is the first post that came out from the North Florida Kart Club. Those guys saying they're going to be closed for six to eight weeks due to construction projects at the racetrack. So um, those guys, the the what's going on there is that is a track owned by the city. The North Florida Kart Club gets to operate it. Um, but they do not uh, own the racetrack or really control what happens. They just have exclusive rights to go there. And since it's owned by the city, anyone can practice there. And that means you don't even have to have a racing cart there. You can show – there are people who show up with Groms, show up with dune buggies. Uh, Polly and Brandon will talk to them in a second, but they've obviously done some testing there recently as well. Um, and, and their team owner, John's done that a lot on the 206 side. Anyone could go. You could go practice for free. A lot of times when guys would go down for the WK Daytona Kart Week when things were a lot bigger is they would go stop at Jacksonville on Wednesday or whatever be the first, like move-in day or the day before move-in day, break in their motors, and then they would go to the track because Daytona Kart Week is a strict three-day schedule typically with only one day of practice. So if you didn't want to burn one of your five practice sessions, you'd go to Jacksonville on your way down since it's in North Florida and break it in for free because there's no practice. So – um what we don't know is what's going to happen, right? They've been kind of cagey about it. So the first thing was it was just a construction project. And that, from what we understand now, is really just about the facilities, which, to be honest, is, is more than needed because those guys have been um, – they haven't really done much with the scoring tower. It's pretty old. The bathrooms are really old, and they need to be cleaned up to host some major high-class events there. Um but, uh, again, that's – we don't know. It just says construction projects for six to eight weeks. A couple people were asking questions, didn't really get too many answers. The next day, they go back on Facebook again, and the North Florida Car Club submitted a proposal to the city's request for a proposal for the contract to have exclusive use of the 103rd Street Sports Complex. That's the name of the racetrack. The club's awaiting notification from the city as to who has been awarded the contract, so the city's deciding uh, through committees. And then that comes into effect October 1st. So again, they said that for six to eight weeks, tracks shut down. So that means that would go potentially into October because they only got shut down here at the end of August. If it does go six to eight weeks, wouldn't open up till November, no matter what. Um, but 
they were submitting for an exclusive use contract. And again, I believe that exclusive use contract for the North Florida Kart Club, they're just looking to be the exclusive race promoter or at least control who hosts owner kart races there. Um, so again, that would give them access to whenever they want to still do club racing. They're not interested so much in, I believe, at least the day to day. Maybe they wanted to get some of those funds, but the truth is that for clubs that don't have personnel or the extra budget to full time staff a racetrack, it's really hard to enforce fees. Um, the track that I grew up at in Georgia, uh, what they would do is they had a just a webcam pointed at the racetrack to try and enforce them. Um, but I mean, still, you have a lot of guys that would not buy their pass online and just risk it and just go drive on the racetrack during that day. I mean, it, you'd need someone to monitor it anyway. So I don't think they're interested in any of that. They're just interested in uh, operating the races. But the important part to note there is that they're awaiting notification from the city of who's been awarded the contract, which makes it seem that there's more parties interested in doing something with Jacksonville. And that track, again, it really it at least checks the minimum boxes uh, to host a big race. It has enough uh, pit space to park everybody for a big race. It uh, is a long enough racetrack and wide enough racetrack. It could hold a big race, which takes Anderson Race Park out, both a little bit on parking and mainly on size. Orlando Kart Center's borderline. Ryan and I talk about it all the time when he comes on here. They'd have to really get creative to make the parking work, but at least the track could work. Ocala Grand Prix is gone. Homestead is a track that checks all those boxes, but we've been going there a whole lot and everybody gets burnout of even good tracks like Newcastle and GoPro and visit them as much as we do. Uh, but then now when we go to, you know, a track that tears up go-karts and, and gets guys ribs a little bit hurt, people are even more burnt out about Homestead. So the track options in Florida are tight if the winter series are all looking to go there. Um, and nonetheless, it's, it's something we really don't know. That's all really, really new. Um, Can they even host that many people there? Because, like, the last time I was there was, like, Rock Cup in, like, 2015 or something. And it was, like – I mean, it's it's good for pickup trucks and stuff to get in there, but it's all, like – it's tight. It's not like – I don't think you could fit, like, an RPG-sized trailer through there easily and, and make it, like, comfortable. Like, it would be a difficult – trip to get it maneuvered in there and turned around and in and out like it it seems very very tight for it to like fit everybody yeah it's I definitely was, uh... not easy for we were there with when i was with car sport and we had our big truck and trailer and along with like what awesome miles just said on facebook the power lines are low hanging i kind of remember us having to go on top of the trailer and hold the power lines oh, up so that you could get the trailer underneath of it sketchy. and um yeah it was definitely very sketchy but you could fit the big size truck and trailers in there because i believe at the time top court usa had their truck and trailer in there and we had our big rig in there so you can fit them but it's definitely not the best uh way to get in yeah i was i was just there like uh what two or three months ago i mean it's still like it's all still the same, pretty much. I mean, the track's pretty rough. I, I pretty much spun out by myself, but uh, that's nothing new, though, Polly. You can do that every track, bro. I, I don't know. I don't. It's it's pretty. It's kind of a dangerous track. Like even with the Briggs, like you get it right, you could ship someone straight over the hill, and it's like. And there's a fence um, right on the exit of all these like the like banking. I've seen AJ Myers like total the chassis just went off one of the banking and straight into a fence and total the chassis and like. There's somebody on my team back in like 2011 that went off at the end of the straightaway, like cartwheel, broke their collarbone, and it was like they just hit a bump on the straightaway, and it just sent them off the track and into the fence. So that's my biggest thing is like you, you put 30 something go karts on the racetrack, and then they're just piling in at the end of the straightaway, and then you got a big crash and a lot of a lot of injuries. Yeah, it's, right. It's pretty scratchy. Yeah, well, that's just it, right? We have stupid enough wrecks on tracks that are super safe and have runoff, and guys can still get hurt every once in a while. I mean, um, I don't know. Race, what do you think about these comments? You've been kind of quiet so far. You like street racing. You've been doing street racing a lot in the last few years, especially. It's been almost where you've been in the go-kart marks. You've been busy at all the other shows. What, what do you think about Jacksonville? Um, so not only street racing, but we have a lot of little, well, little shitholes, for lack of a better term, in uh, Ohio. <laughs> And I mean, there's little bull ring 30 second tracks that just suck and fun for Briggs racing. But um, I've never personally been to Jacksonville, so I can relate maybe on the bumpy go kart track side of it. And, you know, at the end of the day, that doesn't really bother me. We're all supposed to be pros. Um, but at the same time, 
if it's unsafe, if there's fencing too close, I mean, that's a huge insurance problem already. So um, hopefully they can figure something out through all this construction. Maybe they're resurfacing the place. But um, since I'm not getting in the seat, I'll be there with my guys, and it's kind of up to them to make it work. Yeah, uh, so again, to talk about uh, and give you guys, the viewers here, a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about with this racetrack, right? So again, this straightaway, super, super long. There's a lot of banking, so the speeds are really high. And that's the other part that annoys drivers typically is that uh, it is such an easy racetrack to learn um, that while it's, you know, fun from like a, you know, from a fun racing aspect, from whether it's rental carts or when you go to club racing or even like regional races, because you get packed up, right? A track that requires less skill to get away. It's why the races at Ocala Grand Prix in the single speed classes are usually pretty entertaining, or we used to be obviously during the track's operation, because that was a very easy track to learn. It wasn't necessarily easy uh, like on its own as a racetrack, but compared to the other racetracks that we go to, it was a relatively easy racetrack. Easier, let's say, than maybe, you know, Newcastle uh, on certain layouts or easier than, you know, Utah or stuff like that. Um, so the same thing here, right? If you've only got really two or three braking zones, it packs everybody up. That inherently is a little bit dangerous. And then to go over the layout here, so you can see that big concrete patch. So that concrete patch, uh, that big square, that is pit area. That's not necessarily runoff. So where the fencing gets sketchy and the last race that Brandon and I were at that had a big, big wreck at is that that concrete area also has the grid. Um, so you go down the end of the front straightaway, you have those two left 90 degree corners, the little kink. And then as you're coming straight on through, that fence and grid comes right up to the edge of the racetrack. That isn't runoff at all. Like the dark racetrack on that short little shoe, granted it's a flat out section that's very wide and you don't necessarily turn the wheel. One guy had a tie rod snap where the wheel literally would not turn at the left-hand kink and plowed into the first plastic barriers, a light amount of them, and then right into the fence on the side of the grid and uh, tore up a cart. Um, so we've seen that. I've heard, like, you, you hear all kinds of war stories when you come back here because this track's hosted big races going back to the 70s, um, which, again, gives the idea that there's pit space and plenty of room. But the difference, like Ryan was saying, is that while there, you know, is, like Brandon said, I think probably room for big rigs, back in the day you saw a lot less big rig factory teams coming to Jacksonville. When we had those big North American races that would see like bigger rigs or maybe factory teams come over, it would be at like Charlotte or other places. It was never really here. This was like a WKA track that was like a, a club race union, a lot like the CKNA Grand Nationals are now. Um, so, uh, but that's, that's sketchy. And then down at the end of the front stretch to the left-hand side of the picture, past the tram lines, there's maybe like, I don't know, Brandon, probably like 50 to 100 feet of maybe like runoff. And then after that, it's, it's the highway. Like, I know yeah. you stuck a leopard there in a Florida Pro Kart race a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, I remember I went right off the edge. Luckily, there was enough runoff to not make it to the fence. But, like, I remember, I believe it was Mike Geeson was telling me stories from when they used to run, like, stars back there or something. And he said some guy made it completely off the, uh, off the track and almost made it all the way to the road. So that definitely goes into the uh, little bit of unsafeness of the track. But... Hopefully no one has to deal with that if we do actually go there and maybe they'll put some like barriers between <laughs> between the track and the road and hopefully it doesn't we don't have to go that far. Well, in any case, the, the important part again about Jacksonville, it's under construction. We don't know what kind of construction they're being. I mean, there's been rumors about guys buying the racetrack and expanding it or reconfiguring it or resurfacing it. Um, at bare minimum, it seems like the most popular rumor right now is that there's just going to be some upgrades facility-wise, which would at least make it where it could host regional series there and, and would try and bid for big series. But if the big series go there, uh, like race, I'm going to be pretty excited to not be driving and looking forward to having these guys <laughs> deal with whatever goes on.